With glowing crimson red eyes and an unnecessarily long cooldown, it's no wonder she's everyone's favorite one-trick pony. I introduce to you the little arc wizard from Konosuba. This is Megamine. Although short in stature, she actually comes from the Crimson Demon Clan, is able to use one of the most advanced offensive spells in the land, which is... Hi, I'm Chris, and welcome to my Waifu Hunter series. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for more Waifu content. So I usually make a post on my community page to see how my subscribers respond to specific waifus, and surprisingly enough, Megamine had the most likes. Now here are my 10 reasons why Megamine is waifu material. Let's start this off with a classic. She's got a great pair of uh, oh, I oh, 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 thank god she has two eyes. Did I just hear someone use a microaggression? <laughs> ah! Another one added to the list of flatness justice characters. Everybody definitely matures at their own pace, right? Just to give you a point of comparison, this girl is Yunyun, a self-proclaimed rival of Megamine, also part of the Crimson Demon Clan. They're both roughly around the same age of 14, and well, you can see Yunyun is quite developed, if you know what I mean. Megamine doesn't mind the difference too much, and says that she'll eventually catch up and develop into a mature body type. She wears an oversized hat, with a face design stitch with thread and buttons on it. She can sometimes be seen wearing an eye patch. Megamine generally wears a short dress, generic boots, and covers up with a dark gold lined brown cape. For some reason, she has white wraps on one leg. I have no idea why, but I know one thing for sure. Thanks to Kazuma, we all know she wears a nice pair of black pansu. Now most spellcasters actually have alternative options to help them fend off enemies. But unfortunately for Kazuma, not Megamine. She is determined to be the best explosion caster. With this, she can only use explosion magic, specifically one spell. Even though she has the option to learn other types of magic, she focuses on leveling up her one spell. That is some dedication right there. Though we can really see the effort and practice on her part as she repeatedly goes with Kazuma to this distant castle and casts her spell on it every time. Megamine loves long, hard rods. Let me explain. Megamine is primarily a spellcaster, <clears throat> a glass cannon, but she's our glass cannon. Therefore, her weapon of choice is a wooden staff to harness this magic energy of hers. So when the party managed to complete the emergency cabbage quest, they all spent their earnings in different ways. Aqua used it to pay off her tab, via Kazuma's generosity. Darkness used it to repair her armor, and well, Megamine got a long hard rod. I mean staff. She's getting a little too excited with that. <laughs> Next up, she never turns down a challenge. Have you ever known someone who takes anything as a challenge? You know, one of those challenge accepted kind of folks? Megami is one of those people. Similar to Goku, she has a weakness for not being able to turn down a challenge, such as making this bold proclamation at the cost of her own bladder. <laughs> Megamine is a master of winning at all costs. You can tell with her encounters with Union. Megamine is a crafty fighter and is willing to resort to some below the belt tactics with no moral restraint. Such as that time they engaged in unarmed combat. Despite Megamine's smaller build, she used her unusually gross state and well, naturally found a way to win. 
I feel kind of bad for Yun Yun. Don't get me wrong, she's a very good natured person who cares for her friends very much. But when it comes to overcoming challenges, there seems to be no line she isn't willing to cross. One of the early incidents was when Kazuma was about to kick her from the party, she made full use of her lolly like appearance and made a scene. <laughs> Moving on, now imagine a nice, warm waifu, I mean bath, waiting for you at the end of your long day. A good soak in the tub is definitely a great way to de-stress and just plain feels amazing. So when the situation came where Kazuma and Megumin were covered in frog slime, they both raced and fought their way to use the bathhouse first. Never turning down a challenge, they both end up in the bath at the same time. Now, this just shows that Megumin doesn't mind sharing a mixed bath together. I mean, this is great, you know, we can get comfortable and get in the bath together. FBI, open up! Ah! As I was saying, don't get in the bath with her unless you want to be labeled as a lollicon. Ah, Megumin cares very much for her friends and would be lost without them. I mean, who else is gonna carry her home after she casts her spell? Kazuma mentioned that Megumin seems to have the most common sense among the three females in the group. Although, given her competition, I don't think that's much of a compliment. Even when in the face of being eaten by a frog, she's surprisingly calm about the whole thing. <laughs> Megumin also enjoys participating in childish antics with aqua or darkness, and often acts a little overdramatic to hype up the mood from time to time. It's really adorable. Megumin is clearly a chunibyo. You can tell with her somewhat childish attitude and wild imagination. By the way, with her eye patch, she's not visually impaired or anything. She can see just fine. Jokingly, she claims that the eye patch seals her immense power and prevents her from going nuclear. Though Kazuma gets to the bottom of it immediately. Hey. Ouch. As mentioned earlier, she doesn't even want to consider using any other form of magic due to some unknown but likely childish reasons. With such a magnanimous personality, Megumin has the habit of making everything unnecessarily epic. Such as simply mentioning her parents' ridiculous names. She also has a cool ass theme song that pops out whenever she casts her spell. Which brings us to our final point. Be careful bringing this waifu into an airport, cause she's the bomb! As mentioned earlier, she only has one spell that she concentrates on. Further increasing its power and lowering its casting time as she levels up. It still takes a long time to cast, and she seems to change the words every time. But they all end up with the same kill word. Now what was it again? <laughs> So there you have it, my 10 reasons why Megumin is waifu material. So what do you think, would you consider having Megumin in your party? If you do, you better get used to this. I just want to give a quick shout out to my friend Simtem who supplied me with the end credit song for this video. Anyway, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below and until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.
Sim, Sim, Sim. 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 Sim.